feel strange the first time. Mask. The awkward gear. But when you enter the water, everything changes. Inhale. The air comes with a reassuring rush. You're light. Agile. Free. Like you've never experienced before. With your first dive, a door opens to a different world. Go through it, and your life will never be the same. If you love nature, you can see more wildlife in 10 minutes on a coral reef than in 10 hours in a forest. If discovery drives you, underwater you'll see things most people never see and go places most people never go. And beyond this, diving and divers are just plain fun. meet all sorts of people in diving and make many new friends. Divers come from all ages and cultures but share a common bond, a passion for underwater exploration. Hi, good to meet you. It's cliche but true that we know more about the moon's surface than the ocean floor. Even after hundreds of dives there's always something new to discover and thrill you. In the Paddy Open Water Diver course, you'll learn to explore the underwater world using scuba equipment, and you'll find the course a fun and rewarding challenge. To become a scuba diver, you need to be comfortable in water and have basic swimming skills. And you need to be in good overall health, particularly your circulatory and respiratory systems. You also need good judgment and be ready to follow the guidelines and principles required for safe diving. Diving's a kick, but like anything with some risk, you can't act like these don't matter. You need to have your act together. PADI, the Professional Association of Diving Instructors, developed the PADI Open Water Diver course based on state-of-the-art instructional systems, education theory, and practice. As the world's largest diver training organization, more people learn to dive in PADI programs than in all others combined. So you can be confident that dive professionals will recognize your credentials no matter where diving takes you. The PADI Open Water Diver course consists of confined water dives, knowledge development, and open water dives. Learning begins with confined water dives, where you learn and apply basic scuba skills in a pool or pool-like environment. It's a course, but this is really a lot of fun. Knowledge development establishes the principles and basic information you need to have fun diving safely. You'll complete this primarily on your own time with some short review and quiz sessions with your instructor. The open water dives complete your training as a certified entry-level diver by allowing you to apply and further develop your dive skills in a dive environment under instructor supervision. The confined water dives are pretty cool, but you're going to love this.
If you've never used scuba before, get ready. This is what you've been looking for. Immediately you experience new sensations, like breathing underwater. You'll venture into a realm where everything looks, sounds, and feels a bit different. In section one, we look at some of the principles you need to know about the underwater world and some of the dive equipment and scuba systems you'll be using. We'll also go over the buddy system and the skills in your first confined water dive. Let's start with a look at buoyancy. Have you ever wondered why a large steel ocean liner floats, but a small coin sinks? The reason is that water buoys up an object with a force equal to the weight of the water the object displaces. So if an object weighs less than the water it displaces, it floats. We call that positively buoyant. If it weighs more than the water it displaces, it sinks. We call that negatively buoyant. If it weighs the same as the water it displaces, it neither floats nor sinks. We call that neutrally buoyant. You'll learn to control your buoyancy using your BCD, buoyancy control device, and weight system, so you hover neutrally buoyant, almost like a weightless astronaut. Or float positively buoyant at the surface, so you can save energy and rest. Although you don't usually notice, air constantly exerts pressure on you. If you've ever walked against a strong wind, though, you felt its force, demonstrating that air exerts pressure. Air pressure is simply the air's weight caused by gravity holding the atmosphere against the Earth. At sea level, we call this pressure one atmosphere, or bar. Water also has weight and exerts pressure. 10 meters, 33 feet of seawater, exerts the same pressure as the atmosphere of air. So at 10 meters, 33 feet, the pressure is two atmospheres, or bar, one of air and one of water. At 20 meters, 66 feet, the pressure is three atmospheres, or bar. At 30 meters, 99 feet, it's four, and so on. You don't feel pressure through most of your body because it is made primarily of water, which is incompressible. But air is compressible, and you will feel pressure changes underwater in body air spaces, much like you feel pressure changes in your ears and sinuses in an airplane. Let's look at how changing pressure affects an air volume. If you descend with a flexible or inverted container, Air compresses, and the volume compresses proportionately to the pressure. For example, with the pressure 2 atmospheres or bar at 10 meters 33 feet, the gas volume is half what it was at the surface. At 3 atmospheres 20 meters 66 feet, it's one-third, and so on. Notice that all the air is still there. It's just compressed into a smaller area. Air density follows the pressure proportionately, too. To maintain the same volume as you descend, you have to add air to keep up with the volume reduction. This is the principle behind equalization, which we'll talk about in a moment. Obviously, it works the other way, too. Air expands as you ascend, and the pressure diminishes. If you have the pressure, for example, by ascending from 10 meters 33 feet to the surface, an air volume will double. So if you equalize the volume by adding air during descent, you must release some of the expanding air during ascent to maintain the same volume. Air in a sealed container, such as a bag or balloon, will expand the bag or balloon, even bursting if it cannot stretch enough to accommodate the excess air. This is a very important concept we'll return to in a moment. Now, let's see how the pressure-volume density relationships you just learned apply to body air spaces, particularly your ears, sinuses, and dive mask. During descent, pressure pushes tissue into these spaces as the air compresses. You feel this as discomfort, and with continued descent, even pain and injury. This is called a squeeze. 
To prevent a squeeze, you add air to air spaces as you descend. This is called equalization. You equalize your ears and sinuses by blowing gently against your blocked nostrils. You can also wiggle your jaw side to side or swallow. Equalize frequently as you descend before you feel discomfort. The idea is to be proactive. When you equalize often enough, you don't feel discomfort. If you can't equalize, ascend a short distance and try again. If you still can't equalize, discontinue the dive. Never attempt a forceful or extended equalization. Doing so can cause serious ear injuries. <laughs> Congestion due to a cold or allergy can plug air passages, making equalization difficult or impossible. So never dive with a cold or allergy, even if you use medications that clear your air passages. Medications may wear off during the dive, creating equalization problems as you ascend, and they may have other undesirable effects, such as drowsiness. You equalize your mask simply by exhaling into it through your nose. If you forget, you'll feel a mask squeeze, which feels a bit like the masks sucking your face in. You'll probably find that mask equalization becomes something you do automatically. <laughs> Decreasing pressure has some concerns you need to be aware of, too, especially regarding your lungs. When you ascend and descend holding your breath without scuba, pressure changes have little effect. Air in your lungs compresses as you descend and re-expands to about its original volume when you surface. But when you're scuba diving, it's another story. Scuba allows you to breathe underwater by delivering air at the surrounding pressure. This means your lungs reach their normal volume as you breathe at depth. And as long as you breathe normally, keeping the airway to your lungs open, no problem. But if you were to hold your breath and ascend, the air trapped in your lungs would overexpand them, much like the sealed bag or balloon filled at depth and taken to the surface. Expanding air can cause lung overexpansion, lung rupture, the most serious injury that can happen to a diver. For this reason, the most important rule in scuba diving is to breathe continuously and never, never hold your breath. Even slight pressure changes, as little as a meter three feet, can cause lung overexpansion. Lung overexpansion can force air into the bloodstream and chest cavity, causing severe injuries including paralysis and death. But while these are very severe injuries, they're also very easy to avoid. Simply breathe at all times, and don't hold your breath while scuba diving. As long as you breathe normally, you continually equalize your lungs with the surrounding pressure and avoid lung overexpansion. It's important to overcome any natural tendency to hold your breath, even in shallow water, and breathe continuously. When you practice some skills that require you to take your regulator out of your mouth, you'll exhale a slow, steady bubble stream so that even then, you never hold your breath. Your other body air spaces generally pose no difficulty when you ascend because expanding air releases from them quite easily. But once in a while, a diver experiences a reverse block. This happens in the ears and sinuses when congestion keeps expanding air from escaping during ascent. Reverse blocks are rare and generally result from diving with a cold or allergy medication that wears off underwater. So don't dive with a cold or congestion. If you feel discomfort caused by a reverse block, stop or slow your ascent and descend a meter, few feet if necessary. Give the trapped air time to work its way out and ascend more slowly. As you just learned, when air compresses under pressure, it becomes more dense. For example, at 20 meters 66 feet, 
the pressure is three atmospheres or bar. So a given air volume has three times as many air molecules as the same volume would at the surface. Scuba gear supplies air to you at the surrounding pressure. So at 20 meters, 66 feet, you use your air three times faster than you do at the surface. All other factors being equal, the deeper you dive, the faster you use your air. Breathe slowly and deeply while scuba diving. Save energy and don't overexert yourself. It's modern dive gear that adapts you for the underwater world. This is why understanding and owning scuba gear is part of the fun of diving. Your PADI instructor will help you select and fit equipment you'll use in this course and invest in for your underwater adventures. You undoubtedly realize you need a mask to see clearly underwater because your eyes can't focus in water. You can choose from a lot of different scuba masks, but don't skimp. Invest in one that fits comfortably and properly. A mask that hurts and leaks sucks the fun right out of a dive. To check the fit, place the mask gently against your face and inhale through your nose. It should stay on by suction without having to press or twist the mask. If you'll need a prescription mask, be sure to tell your PADI professional. Many masks accommodate prescriptions, but not all. When you get your new mask home, gently scour the inside of the glass with a non-gel toothpaste or another low abrasion cleaner to remove chemical coating left from manufacturing. If you don't, you won't be able to defog it for diving. With that tank on your back, you might wonder why a snorkel is standard scuba equipment. First, it lets you swim or rest at the surface with your face in the water without wasting your tank air. Second, if the water's a bit rough, it's usually easier to breathe through a snorkel than your mouth because less water splashes in. A snorkel's basically a tube with a mouthpiece on one end. One suited for scuba will have a large bore so you can breathe easily. Be around 43 centimeters, 17 inches long, give or take and have smooth, rounded bends to minimize breathing resistance. Attach your snorkel on the left side of your mask with the supplied snorkel keeper. Left, because your regulator comes across your right shoulder. Care for your snorkel by rinsing it in fresh water along with your mask. Unless you have size 97 feet, you'll use fins to provide a large surface area that your powerful leg muscles can push against to move you through the water. It may seem like there's an overwhelming array of options, blade size, materials, ridges, vents, and so on. Your paddy professional can help you select the fins best suited to your needs. Full foot fins are convenient and suitable for warm water diving where you don't need additional foot protection. But most scuba divers opt for open heel fins with wetsuit boots that insulate your feet and provide some protection when you're walking to or from the dive site. When sizing your fin, be sure the pocket comes to the point where your ankle meets your foot. If it doesn't, you need a larger size. Basic care for all dive gear calls for rinsing in fresh water after each use, especially in salt water or chlorinated water, keeping it out of direct sunlight and storing in a cool, dry place. Although scuba's been around for more than 50 years, it was relatively recently that the equipment evolved into the integrated, streamlined unit you have today. Modern scuba consists of three basic components that, when assembled, function as a single unit the BCD, scuba tank, and regulator. As you learned earlier, your BCD, buoyancy control device, permits you to adjust your buoyancy by adding or releasing air. 
Over the years, there have been various styles, but today by far the most common is the jacket style BCD, which you wear like a sleeveless coat. Modern BCDs all feature a large diameter inflation deflation hose for easily adding or releasing air, a low pressure inflator mechanism for push button control, and an over pressure relief valve so it won't burst if over inflated. You want to choose one sized for you, adjustable with ample buoyancy for you and your other equipment. Many divers prefer a weight integrated BCD, which eliminates a separate weight belt. We'll go over weight systems in more detail in section two. To use your BCD, you need to adjust it for a proper fit. Check that it's comfortably snug, but not too tight. Then fully inflate it to be sure it still doesn't feel restrictive. Your instructor will help you adjust your BCD during your confined water dives. After diving, rinse your BCD with fresh water like other gear. But you also need to rinse the inside. Fill it about a third with fresh water, then the rest of the way with air. Swish the water around and then drain it completely through the deflator hose. After allowing it to dry, partially inflated for storage. Obviously, your scuba tank holds the compressed air you breathe underwater. It's a high-pressure cylinder made of aluminum or steel with a valve that controls airflow to and from the tank. You can identify valves as yoke valves or DIN valves. Yoke valves are the most common. The regulator attaches via a yoke assembly. With the DIN system, the regulator screws into the valve. The DIN system handles somewhat higher pressures. All regulator connections with a tank require an O-ring. Without it, there's no airtight seal. Look for the O-ring in the face of yoke valves or on the regulator if you use the DIN system. Your tank comes pre-assembled and you only need to have it filled at your local paddy dive center or resort with pure dry compressed breathing air. Note that you never fill your cylinder with pure oxygen in recreational diving. Since scuba cylinders hold high pressure air, you want to handle them carefully. Always block, tie, or strap them so they don't roll or tumble in a car or boat. In places where your cylinder might get knocked over easily, lay it down. Besides rinsing in fresh water and rinsing after each use, you have some extra maintenance considerations with cylinders. The valve should open and close smoothly. If it doesn't, have your dive center or resort service it. Always open and close the valve gently and don't over tighten it. Never completely drain your cylinder. Always leave at least a few bar, couple hundred PSI in it to keep moisture and contaminants from entering. Your scuba regulator allows you to breathe underwater by reducing high pressure tank air to match the surrounding water pressure and delivering it only when you inhale. Because regulators only release air on demand, in some places divers call them demand valves. Your regulator is a simple and reliable device with only a few moving parts. The first stage attaches to the valve and reduces the cylinder air to an intermediate pressure. The second stage reduces this intermediate pressure to the surrounding pressure so you can breathe comfortably. Your regulator also has a submersible pressure gauge, SPG or contents gauge for short, that tells you how much air you have. It has an extra second stage on a longer hose called an alternate air source, which you'll learn to use for sharing air with another diver. And it has a hose with a coupling to attach to the low pressure inflator on your BCD. If you're diving in a dry suit, there will be two such hoses, with the longer one going to your dry suit. 
You'll learn more about alternate air sources and dry suits in Section 2. Your dive center or resort will attach the SPG and other accessories you choose. So aside from assembling your scuba unit, there's nothing you need to do with your regulator prior to diving. After each use, rinse your regulator thoroughly with fresh water. Put the first stage dust cover in place to keep water from entering the first stage. Rinse gently and don't press the purge button, which can allow water to flow up the hose into the first stage. Finally, your regulator needs annual servicing by a qualified professional to keep it properly lubricated and adjusted and to replace worn parts. Take care of it, and it will take care of you. Your SPG tells you how much air you have during a dive so you can avoid running out. Obviously, it's mandatory equipment. SPGs range from simple gauges to electronic gauges that combine with other instruments in a dive computer. We'll cover computers in more detail in the next section. Some SPGs have no hose, but use a transmitter on the first stage to send air supply information to a computer on your wrist. One of the principles of safe recreational diving is that you don't dive alone. Even during your confined water dives, you'll practice diving with a buddy. <laughs> Buddies lend each other a hand, and they enhance each other's safety by helping check each other's gear before a dive. By reminding each other of air, depth, and time limits underwater. and by being ready to assist in the unlikely event of an emergency. It's just the way it integrated. Right. So, right so the buddy system is important for practicality, safety, and fun. Yep. You and your buddy have a responsibility to each other. For the system to work, you have to take it seriously. But that doesn't mean you can't have fun at the same time. Gotcha. Make a habit of staying close to your buddy at all times. Okay, now let's look at the scuba skills you learn and practice in your first dive in a pool or confined water. Check, make sure you got the right position there, and then go ahead and cinch up your BCDs. Start assembling your gear by putting your BCD on your tank. The BCD tank band stretches when wet, so the first step is to wet it. Slide the BCD down on the cylinder so the valve opening faces where your head will be. Set it so the top of the jacket's hard plate, if it has one, is about even with the tank valve base. Next, tighten the cam band as much as you can by hand, then swing it over to lock it down. As a check, lift the unit by the BCD and shake it gently. The regulator goes on next. Check to be sure there's an O-ring in the valve or on the regulator first stage if you're using a DIN system regulator. Orient the primary second stage to go over your right shoulder. Then remove the dust cap and put the first stage in place. Tighten the yoke only finger tight. Or for the DIN system, gently screw the regulator into the valve until it's snug. Now attach the low-pressure inflator hose to the BCD low-pressure inflator. Face the SPG away from you and open the valve slowly and gently all the way. If you hear a small leak, the valve O-ring may be dirty or worn out, so let your instructor know. Assuming no leaks, check your submersible pressure gauge to see that you have enough air for the dive. Press the purge button momentarily. 
air should flow freely and stop when you release it. Exhale into the mouthpiece to check the exhaust valves. Then, take a few breaths. Your regulator should breathe smoothly and easily. Last, secure all hoses with clips, snaps, and other attachments. Dangling SPGs, alternate air sources, and other equipment damage and kill underwater life when they drag across the bottom or reef. And this damages your gear and creates drag when you swim. Nothing dangles or protrudes from the proficient, environmentally sensitive diver. With your scuba unit assembled, it's time to gear up. Have your mask, fins, and snorkel adjusted before the dive to save time. If you'll be using a wetsuit, that goes on first. With most jacket BCDs, you put your weight belt on next. What's important is that nothing traps your weight belt. You need to be able to remove it quickly with one hand in an emergency. Wear it with the standard right hand release. If you're using a weight integrated BCD, you probably won't use a weight belt at all. To get into your scuba unit, make sure the shoulder straps are connected. Then slip into it like a coat while someone holds it for you. Fasten and adjust the waist and shoulder straps so they're snug but not overly tight. Shoulders. When everything feels right, tilt your head back. If it hits the tank valve, your tank's probably too high. Condensation will fog your mask unless you use commercial defog, or in a pinch, saliva. Rub defog on the inside of the mask, then rinse it once briefly. You should be fog-free for the whole dive, unless you flood your mask. <laughs> to put on your mask without getting hair trapped under it, put it against your face, then pull the strap back. Put your fins on in the water, or as close to it as possible. Avoid walking in fins. If you must, walk backward to avoid tripping. When you're almost ready to go, check your gear and your buddies for proper fit and function. In the next confined water dive, you'll learn a five-step pre-dive safety check for this. The final step before entering deep water is to partially inflate your BCD. Press the low pressure inflator button in short bursts until you've inflated it enough so you float comfortably. That's usually around half full. To deflate your BCD so you can go underwater, you want to be vertical, relatively head up, in the water. Hold up the BCD hose and press the exhaust valve button. Many BCDs have quick dump exhaust valves too which you use by pulling the BCD hose or a lanyard. You ready to take your first breath? <laughs> All right. Ready to breathe underwater for the first time? Great. But just a second, your instructor needs to give you a few hand signals so you can communicate down there. Ready to give it a try? You bet. Yeah. Slower down, put the rake in your mouth, exhale into it first, and just take deep, slow breaths. All right. Let's go. Okay. All right. Okay, now. You'll never forget the first time you breathe underwater. And you may not want to trust your regulator at first, but take a few breaths. Hey, it works! As you get used to breathing underwater, remember to breathe continuously and not hold your breath. Watch for your instructor's signals, but relax and enjoy the experience. you're comfortable breathing underwater, your instructor will have you remove the regulator from your mouth and replace it. 
You learn to do this because there are skills you'll practice that involve taking out the mouthpiece, and it can happen by accident. No big deal. Out of your mouth, the second stage fills with water that you need to clear before you can breathe again. The easiest way to do this is in a more or less upright position. Exhale sharply into the mouthpiece. This blows the water out of the one-way valves so you can get air. But what if you don't have enough air in your lungs? No worries. Block the mouthpiece with your tongue and then again in a more or less upright position. Press the purge button. Air from your tank blows the water out and now you can breathe. Since the rule is you never hold your breath while scuba diving, when the regulator's not in your mouth, exhale a continuous stream of bubbles by making an ah sound. This keeps your airway open to avoid serious, possibly fatal, lung overexpansion injuries. When you let go of the second stage, or if it gets bumped from your mouth, it tends to swing behind your back. There are two ways to find it easily. For the first, get in an upright position, then lean a bit to your right. Run your arms straight back alongside your tank and then sweep forward. The regulator hose will end up against your elbow. This method is easiest and works most of the time, but once in a while your second stage may hang up on something. Reach behind your head with your right hand and find where the hose attaches to the first stage. It may help you reach the first stage if you lift the tank up and to the right with your left hand. Follow the hose until you find the second stage. By this point, you'll probably notice that water tends to seep into your mask. You don't want to have to go to the surface every time this happens, so to blow it out, hold the top of your mask firmly against your face, blow through your nose, and tilt your head back. The air forces the water out of the bottom of the mask. Some masks have a purge valve for clearing water. If yours does, hold your mask firmly and look down while blowing through your nose, making the valve the lowest point. The air forces the water out the valve. Ready to stretch your legs? Point your fins straight behind you and kick from your hip slowly and steadily with only a slight knee bend. Keep your fins under water when swimming at the surface because lifting them out of the water just wastes energy. Of course, the flutter kick isn't the only way to get around underwater. If you have a physical challenge that limits leg use, for instance, you'll swim with your arms and hands. You can use special webbed gloves for more power. When you're ready, your instructor will have you venture into somewhat deeper water. Take your time and equalize your ears and mask gently and often, beginning as soon as you submerge. It may take some practice before you equalize effortlessly, so be patient and take your time. Stay close to your buddy and watch for signals from your instructor. As you already learned, it's important to get into the habit of monitoring your air supply by checking your SPG frequently. You want to establish this habit beginning now in your first confined water dive. Check it frequently and let your instructor know if you get close to the caution zone. Although it shouldn't happen if you monitor your SPG regularly, you'll learn how to respond to an out-of-air emergency, beginning with alternate air source use. First, give your buddy the out-of-air and share-air signals. If your buddy has an extra second stage alternate, you'll pull it free from where it's secured on the chest. Place the second stage in your mouth, being sure it's right side up, Clear it like you've already learned and resume breathing. Next, you and your buddy hold on to each other so you stay close as you ascend. The best way to hang on depends on the type of alternate you're using, but generally, you hold on to your buddy's arm, 
BCD, or tank valve. If it's an alternate inflator regulator, your buddy will give you the second stage from his mouth and switch to the alternate on the BCD hose. Although it's easy to avoid running out of air, it's a good idea to practice alternate air source use from time to time, just in case. After you've been swimming around a bit, your instructor will give you the up signal. You want to ascend by swimming up slowly, staying close to your buddy. When you reach the surface, keep your mask on and regulator in your mouth, and inflate your BCD until you float comfortably, then swim back to water shallow enough to stand in. During this course, you'll learn several methods for exiting the water, each suited to a different dive environment. At this point, you'll probably exit in shallow water. You and your buddy help each other out of your weights and scuba units and hand them up to someone, put them on the pool edge or something like that. Take off your fins and exit the water carefully. After your confined water dive, you'll need to disassemble your gear for rinsing and storage. First, close the tank valve until it stops. Next, push the purge button to release all the pressure in the regulator. Disconnect the low pressure inflator hose and unclip the SPG. Remove the regulator, then dry and replace the dust cap. Wrap and secure the BCD straps so they don't dangle. Release the tank band and lift it off. Lay the tank down so it can't fall while you rinse everything with fresh water. This is important, even after a pool dive, because chlorine can harm your gear as much as salt water can. Okay, that takes care of section one. Good job. You're well on your way toward your PADI Open Water Diver Certification. Pretty cool, huh?